In this video, we're going to explore a couple of different concepts. One is the beginning of what is called masking, and as the term implies, a mask is something that covers something else. And if you think of it in terms of like masking tape that you cover over part of your bicycle before you spray paint it, and the area that you cover with tape is not affected by the paint, that's typically how masking works in Photoshop. Today we're going to start with a very, very simple sort of mask called a clipping mask, and we're also going to talk about um, the blending modes a little bit today as well. So what I'd like to do first is I have this image of an antique photograph that I'm going to use as a background on my piece. So I'm going to drag this out onto my blank document like so the next thing I'm going to do is I have this really hideously ugly picture or a vector image of sort of floral hearts butterflies motif and I would never use it in this way, but I think that the design does have some sort of merit. So I'm going to extract it from its background and I'm going to use my magic wand tool with contiguous checked off and then I'm going to select the inverse which just selects the pink, choose my move tool and drag that onto my canvas. That's pretty big so I'll have to scale that down using my transform controls to fit onto my background layer and we'll center that up a little bit. Now I really, as I was saying, don't really love the way this looks as a, a pink object, but I think it does have merit and it could look kind of interesting if it were in fact covered with something like newspaper or something like that, so it looked as though it were cut out of newspaper. So to do that, I am going to take actually an image of an old newspaper that is stained up and it has old little drawings and stuff on it and I'm going to drag that on top of my shape which is on its own layer and this is the key to a clipping mask the object in which you want to maintain its shape, the selected object which, whose shape is important needs to be on the bottom layer and what you want that shape to turn into, what image will be clipped into it, will be on the top layer. So this top layer of newspaper I would like to take on the bottom shape. So by having that on top, with that layer selected, I'm going to control or right click and choose create clipping mask. And when I do that, look what happens. It clips the newspaper into the shape underneath. And notice it's still there, and I can move it around. It's almost though it's in between the two layers, and it just sits there, and it opens up that shape layer. And I can go ahead and add filters to the newspaper layer. I can turn to black and white. I can transform it. I can do all sorts of things and it will just move around behind that layer until I merge the two layers together. Once I have, in this case, I'm going to merge them together and I'll show you why. I'm going to merge down, which will merge the two layers together. So now that's all one unit. And I'm going to put a drop shadow on it which will really sort of make it stand away from the background and give it a lot more depth, like so. And I'll put a little size on it to soften it up. And here's without the shadow, sort of flat. With the shadow has a lot of dimension, like that a lot. So now I would like to, before I move on to the next layer that I'm going to put on, I would like to talk a little bit about, about um, blending modes. A blending mode is in the layers palette right here and if you click on it you see that we have all these different blending modes and what these are is how one layer will blend with another they all do different things and it takes a while before you understand what each one does because they they all do sort of different things and it all depends on the two layers that are being blended together because one 
one object will blend very differently with a background texture than another object with. So you really never know exactly what you're going to get. So what's nice about it is you can, if with the and you always blend from the top layer down. So with the top layer chosen, I'm going to blend it to the layer underneath. And if I hold down Shift, with the Move tool selected, hold down Shift, and hit the plus and minus signs. Plus will scroll through, and you can see it will start to change, and it's doing these different blends. And notice the words in the Layers palette are changing, and it will change through. So plus sends you, now we're back to the beginning, plus sends you through it, minus will backtrack. So until you find exactly what you want. And I'll do this, I'll go through this several times. I really like that one, multiply. I love that one, color burn. And I really like linear burn. So I'm actually going to leave it at linear burn because I think that's very attractive. And I think it has a beautiful blend. So now I have this young lady here, who's 1920s sort of, um, photograph and I'm going to cut her out of there very loosely with the lasso and I'm going to move her on top of this and I'm going to transform her up a little bit and I know right now it looks a little bit like she was simply cut out, but now I'm going to go ahead and feather her a little bit. I'm not going to go through that very much because we've talked about that a lot. So feather, I'm going to do like 15 pixels and select inverse and delete, delete until I get a nice soft feather that makes me happy. And I'll deselect and now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to actually pull with using my eraser tool. Hello, there we go. Using my eraser tool with zero hardness, I'm going to sort of soften up these edges a little bit. Nothing harsh about her at all. I'd like her to be very soft. Okay, so now I'm actually going to blend her. So again, I'm blend from the top down. So with my move tool selected, I'm going to hold down shift and hit plus. That one's kind of great. So what was that? Darken. I hit minus to go back. Darken is nice. Uh, darker color is nice. That one, which is overlay, is kind of great. But I think Darken is the one that I'm going to use. Like, so I'm going to go through all of these, go back to Darken, which is right there. And if I would like that effect, but a little bit punched up a little bit, I can simply Command J to give myself another layer, and it will, will pump that up ever so slightly. So there you have it. Here we have a very interesting um, composition using an old photograph background, which I simply used the clone stamp tool to stamp out the image that was there using its own background. I have this rather ugly pink vector thing, which now looks pretty great as with using an old vintage dirty newspaper to clip to it. So I use the clipping mask. And then I have this old vintage portrait that I also changed the blend on it that blended to the newspaper, which I also blended to the background. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. It's something that we did talk about in class, and we went over the clipping mask, which is the first mask we're going to talk about, and we went over the blending modes and how to access them using the shift, plus, and minus keys. And again, it's all about what your two eyeballs connected to your brain see. It's not about what I see, it's not about what your friend sees, it's about how you see it. Because these blends all say and feel a different way to everyone who looks at them. So you're the artist, you choose the blend, because whatever works for you is best. Have fun!